So let me summarize what I've got here and we'll take some questions. What I've said is for the last 36 years, we have fought the longest war in the history of the United States, the war on drugs. We've spent over a trillion dollars on that war already. We uh, quadrupled the number of people in our prisons in a 20 year period, made, made building prisons the fastest growing industry in the United States. Now there's something to be proud of. We have 2.2 million people in prisons today far more per capita than any country in the world. And to put that in context, the United States has 4.5% of the population, 22.5% of its prisoners right here in this land. Something wrong with it. But then we can fix that, and fix it real good by coming up with a legalized regulation of drugs. So uh, all LEAP wants to do is we want to lower the incidence of death, disease, crime, and addiction. And sadly, all four of those categories are made infinitely worse by this war, so that's obviously not what we, we want. And we do think that legalized regulation will lower all four of those categories. Once you legalize the drugs, everything after that is a matter of regulation. How are we going to regulate it, okay? All we're saying is, who regulates drugs today? The criminals. Who controls drugs? The criminals. The criminals tell us what drugs are going to be supplied to our community, uh, how potent those drugs are going to be, what the cost is going to be, what age group they're going to sell to, and where they're going to sell. And if they decide that they're going to sell heroin laced with pentatol, a deadly concoction, to 10-year-old kids on our playgrounds, that's what's going to happen under the system we have today. We say let's take control of these drugs ourselves and set up regulations of how it's going to be. And it doesn't mean that no child would ever get drugs, but it means a lot less would get drugs I mean, right now, there's no child out there that can't get drugs under this system. We'd make it a little harder for them. You know, our, if our children have said it's easier to buy illegal drugs than buying beer and cigarettes, why don't we make them legal and make it just as hard for them to do that? Yes, sir. I think another part of and the And I'll come to, back to Netherlands in a moment. Another part of the answer to that is there is billions of dollars being spent to encourage people to buy the drugs as there is the alcohol. That's absolutely right. Uh, any more questions? Uh, if not, I'll go. Yes, sir. Uh, how does adult go about buying drugs that's legal? How does what? The adult go about buying a drug that's legal. Well, there's there's different possibilities for that. Some of our speakers, we got 130 speakers, we're all law enforcement folks, so uh, I tell you what groups we represent. Some of our speakers feel like uh, this should be handled maybe in a state store like they have in New Hampshire or Pennsylvania or Virginia where there's no advertising of this, it's only to adults and and uh, um, it's very, very stringently controlled and then taxed, highly taxed, and then you use those taxes to help people that might get a, have a problem. I don't like that idea myself that much. I got a different system, and my system would be more like what they do in Switzerland. And here's the reason. I think what we have to do is we have to remove the profit motive. You know, I told you that, that profit is obscene. Marijuana today is worth more than gold. Heroin is worth more than uranium. Heroin is probably the most expensive commodity on the face of the earth. And they're just weeds that grow anyway. So if you legalize it, you take the profit motive out of it. And this is the first question I get asked whenever I say this, uh, just as he was worrying it, and it's quite logical to worry about. You know, I was worried about it too. No, everyone won't uh, start using drugs. As a matter of fact, we did a survey, on the, our, our people did a survey on the 10th graders in Holland where drugs are virtually legal, to see how many of those kids had used marijuana, we discovered 28% of those little rascals have done it. And we came back and we did the same survey on our 10th graders, where marijuana is like the devil's own weed, and we found 41% of our kids have tried it. Right? So, obviously there's something going wrong here. Now, the, the scientists who did that, they went back to the Netherlands and they talked to the drug czar of the Netherlands, who happens to be their minister of health. Because over there, they treat drug abuse as a health problem, not a crime problem. And when he was asked about this, I think his answer was right on. He said, you know, I think what we managed to do in Holland is we managed to make pot boring. Yeah, he says, young people aren't likely to act out against authority figures by doing things that they think is boring. And, and his kids over there in the Netherlands know that when they're an adult, and an adult, by the way, is 18 years old there. They know that at 18 years old, they can walk in any coffee shop and get all the soft drugs they want, marijuana or hashish. And because of that, he pointed out to these, these scientists, because of that, they don't start using drugs at 14 years old. 
which is the entry level age for using drugs in the United States. And if they only wait those four very formative years of your life, from 14 to 18, to make a decision, will I or will I not use drugs? So many fewer of them ever choose to use drugs, but he pointed out that in the Netherlands, the per capita use of marijuana is one half of what it is in the United States. The per capita use of heroin, cocaine, methamphetamine is one fourth of what it is in the United States. Their murder rate is one fourth of what it is in the United States. Everything gets better. And it's not because they treat their people more harshly. As a matter of fact, they, they incarcerate, imprison their, their population at a rate of 100 people per 100,000. Anyone know what the United States does? Since 2003, 726 per 100,000. Over seven times as much. And yet our problem just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. So what are the outcomes of legalization? First outcome, we're going to have to arrest, well, now it's up to 1.8 million people next year. And we can save that $69 billion we're going to spend on it. So we would have the drugs legalized, and we'd have the federal government produce those drugs, or at least quality control them for uh, production for consistency, standardized measurement, and potency. And you know what that would do? That would end overdoses. People don't overdose from drugs because they shoot more and more dope in some crazy attempt to get higher and higher. They overdose because they don't know how much of that little package of powder they're buying is, is, is the drug and how much is the cutting agent. And they don't know what it's cut with either. It's like Russian roulette without a gun. And it's impossible to tell because this is an illegal commodity. They legalize it, they will know we get end overdoses. Uh, then uh, distribution. Well, I would want to distribute this in free maintenance doses to any adult money, whatever we decided that the adult was. They get the dose or when they work out. Well, oh, this, this is something that would have to be talked about. But let me, let me tell you how this is already working. By the way, we've been doing this for 25 years with methadone, right? But there are countries that do it better. Like in Switzerland, started in 1994, and it worked so well, Holland picked it up five years later. They treat heroin users. They said, we don't want to arrest our kids any longer for making a very bad choice and becoming addicted to drugs. So they set up clinics all around Switzerland where heroin users can actually come in and inject that terrible drug up to three times a day for free under medical supervision. Job specialists there, educators, uh, uh, social workers, people to wean them off the drugs are also there. And they see them three times a day. Here's the outcomes. Outcomes are unbelievable. First outcome, there hasn't been one overdose death there since 1994. Think of all those lives. Huh? Crime was cut by 60%. Nobody's selling heroin on the streets of Switzerland where these pro projects are because you can't be free. Who would buy from you? And if the drug dealer's not in the neighborhood selling the heroin, they're not killing each other to control the market, they're not killing cops, they're not killing kids in crossfires, and maybe even more importantly, they are not killing kids by enticing them to become drug addicts and get hooked. They just came out with a study, a 10-year study about this project. It was just published in the Lancet, which is the uh, most prestigious medical journal in England. And it shows that in Zurich, there has been an 82% decline in the expected cases of new heroin users. 82%. That is an amazing success story. Time, time out. Folks, I hope you learned something from Mr. Jack Cole. Do check out Leap Law Enforcement Against Prohibition Online. And do remember, folks, that the war on drugs is much more than a war on drugs. Thanks for being with us. Silly way out, Willie. Fuzzy Zipwack. Dr. Doolittle. Remember, freedom is not free. This is the test of the emergency bomb hit system. This is only the test. Fire is mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore. This is a test of the emergency bomb hit system. The bomb hit is in your area in voluntary defiance of federal, state, and local authorities. have developed this system to keep you informed in the event of a bomb hit emergency. If this had been an actual emergency, the attention signal you just heard would have been followed by official supply information, blue scanner news, and emergency bong hitting instructions. This concludes this test of the emergency bong hit system.